Welcome to the start of a whole blue collar coder series on arrays. So why are arrays so important? Well, because we use them everywhere. And if you want to be a proficient JavaScript coder, you should really know arrays to the memorization level. So let's get started by taking a look at JavaScript iteration of arrays in this first video. So the for loop, which we're going to look at first, is actually a tricky one because it's good for some things, but not good for array iteration. So let's start off by looking at a good use case, which is to create an array. And in this case, I'm going to create an array that has numbers that go from 10 to 50 in increments of 10. So we'll say that this is good. And I'm going to create my for statement. And I'm going to create a value that I'm going to initialize to 10. Because that's where I want it to start. The next thing I want to do is specify a loop condition. And that tells JavaScript to stay in that loop until that condition is no longer valid. So what is that condition in this case? Well, that is that value is less than or equal to 50. So we're going to keep looping until that condition is no longer true. And then while we're in there, we want to increment that value. So in this case, I'm going to say value plus equals 10. We're going to go up by increments of 10. Now I'll do console.log so we can see the value. And we can see that it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as we would expect. By the way, the extension that I'm using here is Quokka. It's actually free, and there's a link to it in the description. It's a nice way to do workbooks inside of VS Code and code interactively like this. OK, so now let's create an array out of this by initializing the array first. And then with that, I can do a, an array.push. And then I can push each value into that array. And now we have an array that has those numbers 10, 20, 30, 50, and so on. Now, this is actually a good use of a for loop, but there is a bad use of a for loop that people use, which is to iterate through an array like that. And so let's check out that. So again, I'll start with a for statement. And I'm going to start with an index, set at 0. And then I'm going to set my loop conditional to loop until I have gotten to just about the end of the array. So in that case, I would say index is less than the array of numbers dot length. And then I'm going to add one to the index as we go. And again, I'll console.log. And to get to the piece of data, I need to take the array and then use the brackets to say, I want the data value at this index. And so in this case, we get 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, as you would expect. So why is this bad? Well, there's a whole bunch of mistakes that I can make when it comes to this for loop. For example, the most common one is to use less than or equal to when it comes to the array length. And that gives me an undefined value because I'm going off the end of the array. Another one would be to use a different variable name in each one of these locations. Another one would be to initialize it improperly. Another one would be to increment it improperly. Another one would be to not use the correct variable when it comes to dereferencing array of numbers. There's just a whole bunch of mistakes that I can make when it comes to a for loop, which is why we have the for in and for of alternatives. So let's go over and take a look at those and how those work. So again, I'm going to start with an array of numbers. And I'll say 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So the for in loop is actually really old school JavaScript. We started out with a for in loop back in the day. So let's try it out. So I'm going to, again, do four. And then I'm going to say, in this case, const index in and then numbers. So we give it the name of the index variable that we want. In this case, we'll call it index. And then we give it the array, which in this case is numbers. And then again, we use curly braces, and we do console.log, and we get index here. So now we can see that the numbers are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, but the value that we're getting back for this index is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's just the index into that array. So to get the value from that, you have to dereference it. So I'll show how that's done. And now we're getting 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Now, this has always been a hassle, right? Because most of the time that you're iterating through an array, you don't care about the index, you care about the value. And so in this case, you have to do this additional step of this dereference to get that value. So when ES6 came around, we got the for of loop. So let's try that one. 
Again, we'll use for, we'll say const value, and we'll do of and numbers. And then again, we'll console.log and give it the value. And now we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. How clean is that? And you can see every step along the way, we've reduced the amount of error. So back here with our for loop, we had all kinds of different ways to mess that up. Here we have got only one way to mess that up, and that's by using the wrong index. And then finally with this for loop, there's basically no way to mess this up. So another thing we got with ES6 was the for each method on array. So let's go try that one out. So again, I'm going to bring in that numbers. And now we can do numbers dot for each. And like a lot of these array methods, it takes a function. So you give it a function and that function gets called for every single item in the array. Now that function takes some arguments and the first argument is the value. And so in this case, we can say again, console.log value and get 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. That's great. You can also get the index. So in the rare case where you're interested in the index, you can get that one as well. That is the second argument. So we'll do console log index. And you can also see that you get the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so why would you use anything other than for each? It seems to do everything, right? Well, there's a couple of small little gotchas. The first one is actually pretty small. It's that you can't use a break inside of a for each loop. So in this for of loop down here, I can say if the value is above 20, then stop the iteration. So the way that I do that is I can say if value is greater than 20, then break. And now we can see that we get values out of 10 and 20. And once we hit 20, we break. There's no way to do that inside of this for each. You basically are going through the whole thing, whether you like it or not. And then there's one more thing that actually is pretty significant. And that's that the for each loop is incompatible with async await. So let's go try that out. So I'm going to go over here to this part one async. And I'm going to create a function called get by ID. And it's going to take an ID and it's going to return a promise. So this is kind of like a, an API function. And a promise takes a function where the first argument of that is resolve. And that's the function that you call when you're done. So I'm going to do a set timeout here and I'm going to wait for a second and then say that we got the value back. Set timeout and then we give it a function. I'm a console.log that we got our data, we got ID. And then I'm going to resolve at that point. I'll resolve the ID. Sure, why not? Okay. And then I'm going to do this in one second. So I'm going to put a one second timeout there. And so this is basically going to imitate that we went off to a service and that service took a full second to respond. So let's say that we have a list of IDs. And we want to get those values synchronously, basically. We want to go and get the first value, wait until I get it, go to get the second value, and so on and so forth. So let's do four, and then we'll do const ID of IDs. And now with this, we're going to await the get by ID of that ID. Now we're actually going to run this. So in Node, you can't do a top level wait like this yet. So what I need to do is first create a function, which is an async function. And I'm going to copy my code into that. And then I'm going to execute that code. All right, let's take a look and see how we do. Now we can see that we got the result, but we got it back one, 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 just like that. One every second. Boom, boom, boom. That was absolutely synchronous, and that's what we would expect. So now let's try to do the same thing with a for each. So I will comment this out and I'll do IDs dot for each and I will give it an async function to call back. And with that, I will give it an ID and then I'll again do that await get by ID. Let's try this out. And you can see that after a second, they all went boom, just like that. So it was actually parallel. Now that may be the behavior that you want, but it's unexpected here. 
the way that this code flows, it seems like we are expecting that we're blocking on each one of these, but we're not. And that's because for each is not compatible with async await. So this is just a gotcha that you gotta be aware of when you're choosing between for each and for of. And now why actually is there that choice? Well, that's because when ES6 came out, we got a bunch of new functionality in one big go. We got for of, we got a whole bunch of array methods. And it was kind of confusing at the time which one of those to use. And the community kind of biased towards using a lot of array methods. So the thinking at the time was you just don't use for anymore, just use for each, map, filter, reduce, all of that. Instead of actually thinking about the different iterators and how they work. And the thinking is kind of come around and evolved to don't use for each, but use for of instead. All right, so let's go back and review what we've learned in this about the different iterators. So the for loop, it's good for the creation of data, that's fine, but for iterating through arrays, that's a big no-no, just don't do that. When it comes to for of and for in, if you need the index, use for in. If you need the value, use for of. That's just something you gotta memorize, honestly. And then you can also use for each, but be aware that you can't break out of it and it's got eight problems with async. Well, I hope you learned a lot more about array iteration in JavaScript and what the different iterators are and when and how to use them. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comments section down below. And if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.